Yes. So, so, so thanks everybody for uh, listening to me today. Hi, Lynn. How are you? <laughs> Bonjour. Bonjour. And uh, so what I'm going to do today is not to talk about the book, but talk about the market first and how, how the book was was created. So uh, the book was created in, in, in May in a, in a short discussion that we had within EMCC France. I mean, it was an informal discussion. And at the end of that discussion, about 20 minutes, we said, why don't we make a book with that? Uh, and during the discussion, I, I, I made a, a systemic sketch that I'm going to show you, and which, which was the base for uh, building the book. So that's what I'm going to show. So if I can share the screen, so I'm going to start right now. <clears throat> oh. No, it, you gave me a, a coach. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, both Michelle and Martin have co-host. Okay. Uh, okay, excellent. Thank you. <clears throat> so they, they see my screen, but they shouldn't. <laughs> uh, so well, that, okay, okay. Can you see my screen? There it is. Um, perfect, perfect, Michelle. Perfect. <clears throat> so this is a sketch. I've drafted at the end of that very short discussion. It was in May. And so uh, maybe it's looking a bit complex, but you will see it's, it's in fact simple. So on the right side, the market, and on the left side, uh, coaching, mentoring, and supervision industry. So the, the market, yeah, okay. So the market, there are uh, regulators, uh, emerging business needs, there are there are social societal needs, and all that is, is is going into our industry. And so, the industry I represented some techno tectonic plates, which are mutually uh, influencing each other. And so it's quite it's it's a bit complex to describe, but let's take them one by one. I think we should start with uh, with us, uh, IB, uh, ICF, EMCC, and other professional bodies. And in fact, we what we are looking for are, is quality, and so we we build standards, uh, competencies, we draft uh, codes of ethics. But finally, what we see, what we observe on the market. Is that is a, is a, the fr fragmentation of, of coaching, what we call fragmentation of coaching, and some people want to uh, call that explosion of coaching, is that we started 20 years ago with individual coaching, and then team coaching emerged sooner in Europe than in the US. Now we are working on team of teams coaching, so. People like uh, Tammy Turner, David Clutterbuck, and even uh, <coughs> uh, Damien. We had meetings about team of teams coaching, which is very popular in France. Uh, we have internal coaching, and internal coaches, they want to have their own standards, their own code of ethics, their own everything. We have coaching with horses, we have coaching of complexity coaching of blah, blah, coaching of blah, blah. So you see, coaching is, <clears throat> we say, is, is fragmented now or is exploding into smaller pieces. <clears throat> and of course, immediately, supervision of these different parts emerge. So we have now people working on supervision of team coaching, Supervision of internal coaching, supervision of coaching resources, etc., etc. So the, <clears throat> the 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 tectonic plate of coaching is now looking like that. Okay. The second te 
tectonic plate is the plate of technology. And you see that that's running very, very fast. Artificial intelligence, virtual reality, bots, etc. Uh, last year, I had uh, I was involved in an experiment where uh, I had discussions with five bots and five real humans on small coaching questions like uh, daring to say no, uh, things like that. I mean, small, small pieces of of, uh, of coaching. Uh, so I did the, the I had 10 conversation with these five persons and five bots. And I was unable to recognize which were humans and which were bots. Which, by the way, is that the general feeling of people uh, <clears throat> experimenting that kind of, or doing that kind of experiment. And the reason was that the bots, the machines, were listening to me. They were better in listening, in fact. I was, there was no, no advice, no judgment, no nothing. It was very clean. And I really liked that compared to what I discovered were humans. So technology is going very fast. And is of course uh, supported by research while on, on the bottom, while Coaching is, uh, there is uh, some reflection on paradigms, intrapersonal, interpersonal, more and more systemic, and now some energetic uh, models appear. The other big techno te tectonic plate is the platforms. So, you know, they do what we call uberization, which is a uh, uh, some uh, uh, easing the uh, easing the oh, how can I yeah. relation the relationship relation between a, yeah be, between a client and a coach mm. they also super start brokers to, super brokers mm. so they start to propose to take care of the whole coaching and supervision of big companies and also they use. Uh, they, they, they start to propose some small pieces of uh, coaching supported with a lot of technology. So what platforms are doing is that they use massively technology and also they use massively finance in order to propose services for coaching. The problem is that first, they pay their coaches at a very low price, typically in France, it's uh, uh, 95 euros per hour, which would be something like $100 per hour, which is below what the coach can get by dealing directly with a, with a, a company. Uh, at that rate, coaches are not able to pay any supervision. Some platforms are uh, financing supervision, some are not. But the big issues is uh, an ethical issues because I, I supervise coaches who are used by platforms. And some of them, they don't know the final client. I mean, the platform is giving them objectives and uh, defining indicators, but they have no idea who the real client is at the end of the, of the day. So platforms are going to regulate by themselves. They are going to transform coaching into something different. Now, <clears throat> the last piece of the last, last techno te tectonic plate are regulators. I think regulators, you don't know, I mean, uh, uh, outside Professional bodies, you have almost no regulators in the US, in the US. Maybe the associate, uh, the psychiatric association, APA, 
is really the re regulating or they try to avoid that coaching is too close to psychology. But in Europe, we have a lot of regulators, public or private, especially government are regulating uh, coaching very closely. So uh, the situation, the current situation is that we have three entities regulating coaching and I think supervision very soon, which are professional bodies, platforms, and um, public regulators. So I don't know who will win. The problem of regulators is that as coaching is fragmenting, is exploding, they do not have enough resources to regulate all these little pieces. So what we expect is that they are going to either let it go or they are going to be tougher in regulating to, to something like that. Platforms, we don't know where they go in terms of regulation. What we know is that they want to maximize the return on investment. And for that, I think they are ready to ask. I don't know what they are ready to do, but they probably will do if there is money at the end of the day. So this is the situation on coaching, mentoring, and supervision industry. Maybe Martin uh, made a recap of all that in a chapter uh, on trends. Maybe you can say a few words about what you've, you've established. Uh, I think you're on mute. Or oh, we cannot hear you. Voila. Yes, I was on mute. I'm sorry. Um, I know you didn't want to present the book, but I'm pretty sure people are still interested by the challenge it was. So in May, you designed that, and then you begin to wonder, what about making a book? Then you're looking for a publisher, and then you find a publisher who's interested, provided we are able to launch the book at the beginning of of your 2023 which is crazy right so here is michelle and and his uh, accomplice for that uh, task which was not me for once and um and they're looking for authors who are able to just um well uh, work, work on the beach well, yeah work <laughs> on the beach exactly work on the beach and um so we're 17 of ours uh, 17 uh, co-authors uh, two editors and 17 as a total. And uh, each of us has um, has taken one piece, not exactly that because mine is not there, but uh, still there's one on coaching with horses, one on internal coaching, one on, on team coaching, et cetera, et cetera. And we gave our first and almost final draft by the end of August, when we were um, asked to work on beginning of July, so it's it's been a it's been an incredible challenge, and um, yeah, it's been an incredible challenge, especially for Michelle who got all these papers uh, by the end of August. I was extremely uh, proud to give mine first or second uh, a few days before, and uh, he's been working like hell in September. And uh, everything was given to to the publisher in uh, October. We got it back in December. We had like five or six days to review, and then it was gone to um, to manufacturing. So I, I just wanted to say that because it's been quite a challenge. And what is the most surprising is that the quality is there. Hmm. Maybe because but we I had less clients over the, over the summer. I was not doing that as a coach. But but I, I took my uh, manager uniform. From oh yes, when I yes, yes, there. yes. Yeah, very very good manager. Like a, like a, a good intrication of laissez faire when the battle is lost, and uh, pretty strict. I mean, I tried a few suggestions that were nicely but firmly rejected on how to deal with the footnotes and stuff like that. Anyway, 
So um, once we had done that, we realized that uh, we needed to give to give a a more perspective uh, lens to that. So by the end of uh, of October, I give my chapter, which is on on dealing with leaders, and um, I give it back. And then we realized that we're missing something that's more that that's a wrap up that goes to the that looks to the future. And unfortunately, I was the one having that idea, and so I am the one getting the job. Um, so in this last chapter, uh, I've chosen five uh, topics that you can see here, not ex plus one that is not exactly here, it's here, it's, it's the total, um, it's the total uh, systemic uh, design. Um, so I've been looking at the paradigms, at the paradigms, and I've been focusing on neuroscience, quantic and energ energetics. I've been looking at technology um, on the side of the platform, but also AI, which is quite stunning, as, as Michelle uh, uh, reported. And so the one that was not explicit in Michelle's design is the society. What is happening in the world? So it's the most systemic um, lens. What is today? We're looking at hypermodernism. We're looking at VUCA or BANI kind of conditions in the market and in the world. And also there is um, a, a call for inclusion and diversity. Then the third topic I've been looking at is the planet. And the planet is not only in the environment, which coaches are really looking um, usually very uh, closely at, but it's also the geopolitics. We cannot escape the fact that the geopolitics is changing. It's changing rapidly and quite radically too. And the last one is what Michelle just talked about. It's the profession. Um, and I wanted to underline the fact that there are some research and maybe with more and more supervisor, there will be more and more research and also the professional communities, because we can see in supervision, the communities do not match the, the bodies. Yeah? You, we all are today, we see a CSN, and there is, F, um, there is um, the GSN, there is the French uh, network, there is a Spanish language network that Damien is running, and also there is the Asian network. And the last uh, that Michelle evoked is the regulation of the profession, which is uh, something that um, Europe is looking at. So maybe it's strange to you, but it, it, it answers the question, what is the nature of the, uh, of, of the service uh, that we are providing to our clients? Is it a commercial service or is it uh, something different? that uh, would um, comply, but also be treated as different from a, a mere commercial service. So that's, um, so I'm not giving any answers. I'm just asking questions and putting, um, and, and, and giving facts on these, uh, on these five big topics. And Michelle, you okay. wanted that we work together maybe in the workshop or? Yeah, I just want to give say a few words about this uh, chart in front of you. I mean that in uh, coaching oh, is, is you're expert. dealing with my you're dealing with my chapter. <laughs> yeah, I mean just yeah, it's 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 in fact your chapter. It's, it's also covering all the chapters. Is that coaching is expanding in all kind of directions, and one part of coaching which is ex expanding very very fast is emerging needs for of uh, executives or of leaders and this chapter one is number first. eight the one i wrote yeah. <laughs> and in fact we don't know where all that is going i mean these emerging needs of leaders might uh, end in monitoring or might end some people think that it will go to supervision and some people's think that it will go somewhere else that we don't already know. But for supervision, in fact, I mean, what we see in Europe is that there is two possible trends. One is that supervision will cover all kinds of helping profession, is that uh, uh, coaches will, in the future, supervise a psychotherapist and all kinds of professions like managers. Or supervision will specialize and the research will be done on supervision of team coaching, supervision of 
uh, internal coaching, etc., etc. So this is um, there are two possible directions. So this is the book, and this is the question. You are going to work on this question during about during twenty minutes. So is there a question about the question? Assuming you have a, you are in charge of a chapter in a book about the future of supervision, you know what would be the title of your chapter? Is that clear? Okay. I should say it's extremely clear for me. I have two answers. Yeah, <laughs> already two answers. So um, I. Leave So uh, how are we going to do that, Martin? Maybe we can let group one say what they have to say. I don't know. Um, yeah, what, what we can do, because we are short on the on the hour, and maybe we can ask everybody to to write the, the title of their chapter so everybody can go away with the, all the titles of the all the chapters. And, and then maybe each group uh, can, can share an insight because uh, at least in the group I, I was with, there was kind of a convergence and questions asked, questions raised. Would that be okay with everybody? Would that fit you, suit you, uh, Michel? No, yes, it's okay. I mean, any kind of process, at, as long yes, as there is a process, it's good. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it seems that it's working. Oh, yeah, it's that. Um, <laughs> At, yeah, at least some of our fans are following the process. <laughs> and, it, and it will ease the design of the next book. Ah, okay. Um, so you wanted to ask group one, right? Yeah, Merle. Merle, Merle experienced the same. She was coached by the book. So I'll ask everyone to put themselves on mute, except the people speaking on behalf of the groups. How's that? Thank you. I'm hearing a lot of lovely typing sounds. Ah, so call for, call for a group, uh, Lily, because I've lost the list of participants. All right, hmm. let's start with room one, which is Sylvia, Genevieve, Linda, Martine, and Meryl. Well, briefly, uh, just out of respect for time here, I'll jump in is, um, I mean, the ethical question arose about um, bots and platforms and who has access, the bias of people who code, um, and uh, what else? Dr. Um, Dr. Benjamin has some things to say. Who else? What else? Group. Did we talk about? So I think we were, we were discussing that in psychotherapy, there's very good research mm -hmm. to show that the most prominent predictor of success is the relationship between the therapist and their client. So we were wondering whether it's possible to have a relationship with a machine, and if so, how, and whether machines feel or sense um, and then uh, we were wondering about whether there were a lot of advantages of machines and that somehow a combination mm -hmm. of taking the best of the machine and the best of whatever this human touch is that everyone believes is important and probably nobody can define um, might be the best way forward had we a magic wand. Great. Mm. Sounds like a fascinating it, discussion. Yeah, if I had had that expression, the the magic human touch, I would have used it in the book, but it's too late. It's been written already. Now, the, the David Clutterbuck idea is that we are going to have a machine in support. I mean, the supervisor will have a machine in, for his support. I mean, 
the machine that will analyze the, the, uh, the behavior of, of the supervisee. The supervisee will have a support, will have a, the support of a machine to work with the client. And all these machines will communicate. So it, it's even worse than what you think. All right, let's move on to group two. That is uh, Anushli, Jean Elvier, Jonathan, Ken, and Petra. So Ken, Ken has disappeared. I see Ken. So Anushli did a great job of integrating all sorts of ideas into one chapter name. Uh, which he has put in the chat. Uh, and then we had a broad ranging discussion with lots of other ideas as well. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jonathan, I think that and, it's endless. I mean, it's. Uh, yeah. And actually, um, you didn't include the life source in this version. Yes, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> So, because it's evolving at this moment, yeah, I forgot. Uh, I so uh, it has to be a how can uh, DIB with AI uh, partnership? I'm sorry, John, I can't remember the question. It was embracing the life force. Am I right? At the end, I yes. mentioned. Yeah, while well, also yes. embracing the life force. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not only AI; it's our human life force also has to be inclusive and embraced in this process to make it a uh, holistic one. I'm sorry, I forgot the question. <laughs> I put it in the chat while I was in the call, but I exactly forgot the chapter name. If, Jane, I think you had a lot to share too. Um, yes, I mean, to build on what you already said, um, we are in a situation where we have to not only in learn, but also be comfortable with uncomfortable and uh, be able to step out of what we know. And if we are in the new context, which is something which is happening a lot now and find out how we can best um, interact with new um, contexts a new situation and new people. And it's about becoming uh, complexity, as uh, Petro said, um, co complexity comfortable. We, we, we also ended with yet another idea, which was um, helping coaches and supervisors figure out where they want to play in this new landscape and you know how to deal with the fact that it's shifting and that some may still want to continue uh the way they have and what to do about that if when that's the case yeah it sounds like there's a meta 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 system and then there's <laughs> a many 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 system kind of playing at each other mm. thank you let's go to room three Anna, Gabby, Lynn, and Lynn. Um, I, I can share some of our titles, but the, the group can add as well. Um, the first one was welcoming supervision. We were looking at the, the difference. I think Lynn uh, Harrison brought in that um, it may be mandated in Europe, but it's not in the US and Canada and Mexico, which makes it that many are not getting supervised. Um, and that it should be welcomed, um, uh, something needed, but welcome. Um, and then Gabby shared uh, that we were, <laughs> the, the bot and AI came in the conversation here and there, but she, she shared the importance of innovation and compassion and supervision. Um, I brought in the, the, the all the theory and practice of psychoanalysis and how that can be integrated um, in, in the in supervision or, or leveraged. Um, and finally, we had complexity, uh, 
uh, from Portugal. Uh, I'm trying to remember your name, um, Anne, I think. Uh, and the need for self-reflection and the continued need for supervisors to be supervised, to be supervised. And so that kind of um, everybody needs uh, self-reflection. Okay, thanks. Let's go to group four, maybe. Okay, well, again, we had we had a very far reaching discussion and um, um, here we are trying to trying to uh, pull that together into a chapter title. We kind of lost the chapter title in our conversation um, and then pulled it back together at the end. Um, and I think both Catherine and I put in the chat a version of it, it, basically trying to address the question of moving toward a future, an uncertain future. So is our, do is it the beginning of a movement? Is intention part of that? And how do we do that? Or is it, are we still at the point of trying to understand? And so I think Catherine used the beautiful phrase, is this a group grope? Are we still groping to, um, uh, to wrap our brains around the, the complexity and the ever-changingness of these issues. Um, so, yeah, I don't know if I can articulate any more clearly what was shared in the space, but I'll leave you with that. Catherine or, or um, Michelle, um, let's see. Or Teresa. Teresa, yeah, any... Uh, any other comments, please jump in. No, so perfect. <laughs> perfect. Uh, let's give the last group an opportunity to say something. Let's see. That was it. Those are four groups. Oh, only four groups. So. Yep. So maybe some uh, final, because we don't have a lot of time in front of us, maybe uh, final comments, questions, open questions. Um, or questions on the book. Well, what you have to curious. know is that the, the group of contributors is, is still active and we continue to reflect. And so uh, we, we, we are quite... Um, there is some enthusiasm in, uh, in exploring all that. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Um, Michelle, you, you mentioned um, just at the end that of our conversation that the, 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 the rate of change, the rate of growth is, is quite different between the, the sort of most of the tectonic plates that you referred to and the, the, uh, the platform technology aspect. Um, yeah. those systems are changing at different paces and I, and the question that popped up for me was um even how we define ethics how we understand what is good practice whether it's at the coaching or the team or the supervision or the mentoring like at any in any of those areas um or, or the sort of whole what what are the ethics and how do we you talked about the importance of collaboration. Well, how do you collaborate when your 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 codes, how you define good practice, um, may be so radically different, based in almost in different languages? Yeah, in fact, what we see is the emergence of a lot of new dilemmas, ethical dilemmas. Mm -hmm. uh, Mm -hmm. uh, we saw that we had a complete list of dilemmas and we have some studies about that the excellent study done by Maria Bique from 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 Greece and then suddenly woof, the, the Pandora box is opened yeah. and we have a lot of new dilemmas and, and we are just starting to to try to understand look at that and uh, yeah. Uh, and work on how are we, we are going to provide an answer to all that 
uh, all that mud which arrives. Mm. Um, Jonathan just posted in the chat that the book is available if you want to buy it. It's you can have on Kindle on Amazon US um, next month. And if you do not speak French, you can do exactly like French students who do not uh, read English very well. You buy the book and you just translate it through automatic translating. And, and it, let's say 90% nine, of it is understandable. And, uh, and then you can, you can just reach out to every author and ask them, what did you mean by? <laughs> <laughs> We, we 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 plan to have an English translation of the book. I mean, there is, but there is a, a prerequisite, which is it must be successful in French speaking yeah. uh, in French speaking countries. But we are pushing hard to make it to transform that into a success. Mm. So paradoxically, if you buy it in French to automatic translate it, you will have it in English later. <laughs> <laughs> you have to buy it again, though. Mm. All right. That's it. That's it. It's only um, 27 bucks, probably 28 in US dollars. Should be okay. okay. And it's and, and some that's people have affordable. real. Yeah, that's affordable. For and, 400 and some, pages. <laughs> yeah, it's a 400 pages. Yeah. The, the, Michelle kept saying, the publisher does want one, one more page. Can you take some stuff out? Can you take some stuff out? Yes. Maybe All right. Make... So, sorry, go ahead, Petra, and I... then we can start closing. Yeah, because Michelle said we are trying to give answers, and I'm, I'm, I am keep wondering, what are we trying to give answers to? Are we trying to, because it seems like the system is ever expanding, and I'm not sure we can even stop that or give an answer to that or find a right way. So what are we trying to answer? Yeah, we are trying to understand what we are going to do next. Mm -hmm. I mean, in and there fact, might I mean, be lots of individual answers. What yeah. we've done is something new, which is to take a global view. See that, I mean, some of the the, the contributors say, I mean, coaching industry is at risk, and that's mm -hmm. true. I mean, or, mm -hmm. uh, other ones say, coaching industry is in a sort of, is in a kind of transformation that we will not be able to control. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of them are more optimists and they say, well, if we, if we do that, uh, if we put some intelligence in our collaboration, then we can probably manage. Uh, I think that, I mean, uh, I don't know. I mean, I think the answer is, is in our hands. And, uh, but, but this is, uh, man, but this is to so try to understand where we go next. Yeah. We don't know where we go next because there are many different possible directions. But at least we, the intention was to start a reflection about what will be the future. Yeah. Yeah. Super yeah. helpful. And, 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 and coaching, mentoring, and supervision is not different from the rest of the world. And so if people have been able to, uh, let's say, a model that the world is nowadays uncertain, there's no reason why we would know how the future will be for our professions. Mm -hmm. And if if the world is, is banny, then it's brittle. Maybe coaching will disappear right away in, in a year or two a time span um, and something else will come. Uh, mm. We don't know. I mean, we're mm. just like the world. Yeah, it mm -hmm. feels like it's a it's our ability to be agile to move with where the energy is going in the in the larger system. Uh, exactly. That's a whole nother topic. Yeah, yeah. and some people uh, question um, the, the the global added value of, of of coaching. There is a post on LinkedIn these days that's that's questioning that. Mm -hmm. Is coaching doing good to society? Yes. Some people are asking that. I would add to be agile, but also to know when to use your voice to advocate for whatever changes might be uh, that we would have any influence in. Exactly. What's in our control? What do we have influence on? Absolutely. But, but, but Linda, if we address, for instance, climate in coaching and supervision, we need to have competencies. We need to have something in the contract. Because if you 
if you sell something which is not in the contract, what you do is that you 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 do something against the law, against yeah. yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. I do. There is, the, I there is saying, also a, hmm? yeah. Michelle, I think I was saying more be advocates for the direction that the coach that coaching is going. Mm. Not necessarily advocates for all the major issues that that are not in the contract. Okay, it feels like we're starting a new conversation and I was like, I want to keep going and we need to stop. So March 20th, next month, we have Eric Dehan coming to talk about relational team coaching and supervision in that space. Registration is open for the conference April 28th and 29th. And we've also added an in-person day on August 22nd in Florida, pre-ICF conference. So mark your calendars and we'll see you all next week, next month. Thank, Thank you very you. much for hosting. It's, it was great. Thank you very much. Thank you.